Okay. So now we're going to talk about the, uh, um, basically, in flight controls and, uh, basically tell you, you know, about how much strata to give it, how to plan and respond. It talks about the holding pattern, which, which basically you can pause your flight, you know, if your phone rings or, uh, you, you dropped your cigarette or whatever, you could, you could hit the, uh, you could hold the buying button and the, the plane actually go into a holding pattern about, I think it's 120 or 150 feet up. And it'll basically, yeah, 120 feet up, it'll, it'll fly in a, uh, circular pattern. And basically, once you're done with your phone call, you got your cigarette back off the ground, you can, you can hit the buy button again, it'll come out of the holding pattern that you can take back over flight, which is a great feature. Shows you how to set up your no-fly zone. It does have a low voltage cutoff. Like I say, why would you fly your $300 plane until the battery is about dead? I usually only take about, um, I usually take five minute flights, bring the plane down, Come go back up, take another flight, get a few landings in, do a few touch and goes. The longest I ever flew it, like continuously, it was like twelve or thirteen minutes. But you know, after that long of a flight, me personally, my neck starts to hurt and I get I need a break. So I don't fly for thirty or forty five minutes straight. I, I don't think anyone does. If you if you do, a hey, kudos to you. But uh, it talks about landing the plane. Here's a, here's a key feature uh, that a lot of you guys probably want to um, focus on so you don't tear up your new plane. Um, it's a beautiful bird, man. It, it, I wouldn't want to crash this bird, you know. Um, so why not get good at landing the thing? Okay, here it talks about landing the, the plane manually. Like I say, if you're... Nervous about using the GPS or the auto land. Oh, you just want to have fun landing the thing yourself, which is the part of the beauty of flying. If you ask me here, it talks about uh, landing it manually. Here's your post flight checklist. Yeah. You want to make sure all your controls are intact. Nothing's come loose. You know, especially if you get up 150 feet in the air, you're doing rolls and loops. <laughs> you know, you, you want to bring your plane down at the wild, make sure nothing's come loose or anything, I guess. And, you know, just check it out. Maintain your plane. Here it talks about installing the optional flaps. And, you know, hey, you know, more power to you if you want to put the flaps in. I haven't done it yet. I probably will do it, but I haven't done it yet. So, you know, it talks about um, the optional floats that come with it. It even gives you the part number. Install them and fly with the floats. Here it talks about deactivating the GPS. Pretty thorough manual it comes with. Here it talk about service and repairs. I mean, uh, even if you're a beginner flyer, if you're a beginner pilot, if you if you're into hobby and you're into uh, crafts, I mean, knock yourself out. Why be afraid? Um, get the thing, learn about it. Hell. You don't even have to fly it as soon as you buy it. The first thing you should do, especially if you're a beginner, get used to the manual. Why not read the manual a couple times? Then go out when you're comfortable and fly the plane. Here's your troubleshooting guide. And we're not going to spend a lot of time going over that because I haven't had any trouble. <laughs> but uh, it's nice to know that it gives you a good troubleshooting guide just in case you have certain problems. Here it has the, uh, safety, the National Safety Code. It talks about your limited warranty here. Contact information, FCC information, and that's pretty much it. It goes into uh, another language after that. So basically, the manual is great. It gives you all the information. You take this thing to the part with you, with your plane. You shouldn't have any problems unless you're just not ready to fly yet. And in that case, you may need more time in on the simulator or 
even practice with a smaller, cheaper aircraft first. You know, so um, and yeah, just wanted to give you guys a more in-depth look at the Carbon Cub S Plus, 1.3 meter, ready to fly. Like I said, I've been, I've owned the plane five months. I've taken it out on several flights. I'm enjoying the heck out of this bird. Every time I take it out, it draws a crowd. People are in love with the thing. Ready to fly version, 259 bucks plus tax. You come out of the roundabout, 275, $280. To me, well worth it for a plane this magnitude of scale. It's beautifully crafted, very durable, nice transmitter, 3S LiPo battery and charger. And there's a comparison of the size of the battery to the plane, just to give you an idea. And over here, to give you even more of an idea, whoop, whoop, whoop. Place the revolution descent single pusher near it to give you an idea of this 1.3 meter scale. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the videos. I hope I um, give you all the information that you were looking for. If I have. Do me a favor and like the video. And if and if you um, like some of the things I'm doing, subscribe to my channel. If you got any questions, uh, leave them in the comment box. I usually get um, pretty quick about answering questions and just replying back to people. I'm just a regular person like everybody else, so I'm, I'm not always online, but. As soon as I am on my email, and I and I notice I have a comment, I try to respond as quick as I can. Thanks.